Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with the Door Banner Club supplemental videos that I promised you when you got your spot in our program. These are going to be so much fun. I love being able to display a new project every single month, not just in those major holidays, right? My decorations are overflowing for Christmas and Easter, but certain months of the year, I don't have very much. So I'm thrilled you're part of this. If you're just now seeing this, maybe maybe you've gotten your kit from some other quilt shop around the world. Welcome. This is Shabby Fabrics and we have free video instruction 24 seven. You're welcome to watch uh, and let us share with you what we know and our excitement about creating. Uh, we want to make 2024 our best year ever. So if you haven't already subscribed, do that right now. Let your friends know as well that we have plenty of fun things, a lot of times free downloads, kind of sew alongs and a lot of club and uh, kind of DIY stuff. So the Door Banner Club, as we said, a fun project to display. Obviously this one is for April, which I think in 2024 is actually at the very end of March. Normally it's happening in April, close enough, right? This is really the only project that I can think of of the 12 where it's really mostly applique. The rest of these will have um, a mix of piecing, a lot of piecing with maybe some applique or even no applique. So for this particular month, lots of applique, a big layout diagram. Rowdy Blake has been a great partner for us. They're the ones that are putting these kits together and they have put a lot of extra fabric in your kit. They're very generous and a full size diagram. You can see we got our early copy. It says shop copy, not for sale. Yours won't say that of course. But so when you get your diagram, you're already going, okay, I've obviously going to be doing applique. I'm going to need some usable webbing. So if you don't already have something at home that you like to use, we just use our heat and bond light. Great to pick up affordable, you can grab a package of that. And I'll be using the, a light box and an Applifuse mat. And I'll show you how we'll be using those things to assist me. Because as you can see here with the diagram, the bunny's facing to the right, but here a bunny's facing left. And that's just because we're gonna be flipping that over after we trace everything and we'll start assembling. But let's just start about the tracing. This is our big bunny. Of course, we opened up our fusible webbing and we laid that right on top and with a permanent marking pen, make sure you're not using a friction pen. You might see me grab for that all the time. You don't want to trace this out with a friction pen because it will erase with heat. Okay, you'll be laying your fusible webbing on top of your diagram and tracing directly on that line. And we cut outside of that line, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, whatever you want but don't cut directly on that line just yet. That's saved for later when we iron that to the back of our fabric, our brown fabric. That's when you go ahead and cut directly on the line and make sure you're using a nice sharp pair of scissors because what you cut is what you're gonna get. This is what's called raw edge applique. What you cut out is what you will see on the wall hanging there. Now let's look at the bunny here. You can see that's a lot of fusible webbing. What we did to be economical about our fusible webbing and because you don't need the whole center of this to be having fusible webbing, we went in and cut about, you could even do a half an inch to an inch away from that edge. So this whole open area here, let me show you what I'm talking about. I can just snip in here and start cutting right? Because remember, the fusible webbing is just to hold things down to the background so that we can get to the sewing machine and you're able to stitch that down with a coordinating thread. Then with all of this extra fusible you cut out from the middle of the bunny, you're tracing the egg and you're tracing the flowers and tracing the stem. That's going to make your package of the fusible webbing go a lot longer. I love when we can repurpose things and you'll also be able to use those smaller pieces, maybe even trim some of the letters. You're gonna repeat that process for the bunny, the egg. We even, with our egg, I'll show you this part. 
we, you can see how before we ironed that down, you can see that shine, we cut out that center so that we could again do our flowers and our stems and really make our fusible webbing go a little bit longer for us. You get the idea, get everything trimmed up. And now it's time to get your background to size. And you can always leave your background bigger, do your applique, stitch everything down and then trim. I like to do that a lot. Um, just because when I do start doing a little bit of machine applique and start sewing, the project just draws up just a little bit. So I like to bring leave my background a little bit bigger, do my machine applique with my coordinating thread, and then trim my background up to the size per what's in the pattern. We love to be able to pre-assemble these pieces using the light blocks and the Applifuse mat and the reverse side, in this case, of the diagram. Your other option would be to be bringing pieces to the background one by one. You could do that. That's certainly how I did it in, back in the day, as they say. But I love the ability to use this diagram and let's just show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna flip this over. We'll turn our light box on. And now I get to see where is everything going to be going together. Layering, let's look at this. We can see the bunny is the furthest in the background followed by the egg, followed by our flowers and their stems, and then the grass is in the front. Well, if I put the bunny down first, it's gonna obstruct my view. So I'm not gonna do that part right now, but I will start with that egg, followed by the stems, the flowers, and then what they're calling kind of the grass area. Heat, let's get your iron heating up to a medium heat. As as quilters, we're used to cranking that all the way up to a cotton or linen setting, whatever's the hottest on your particular iron. But fusible webbing cannot really tolerate those, those temperatures and far prefers a more medium heat. And so I will, while that's heating up, let's use our Applifuse map. So this is the layering sequence. A light box. You have your diagram in this case because it had been reversed for fusible applique. You're now flipping that over. We're looking at the back side of that. And now comes the Applifuse mat. This is the magic trick here. This is what's gonna merge all of our layers together. One thing I wanna point out to you about the shapes that we cut out that we noticed kind of afterward actually is right here. Do you see how that stem is driving way up underneath that flower? We really don't need that stem to go that far underneath our flower. And in some cases with lighter colored fabrics, for example, here, you can see how that stem's driving up a little bit unnecessarily high and you can see it because it's yellow. If that bothers you, let's just look at that. As long as you have let me see if that's the right stem. Yes. As long as you have about a quarter of an inch to a half inch tuck under, I can go ahead and trim that away. I do not need those to be that long. And that's my preference. Keep in mind, we did not design these patterns. So, you know, that's just kind of where we kind of take our own experience and maybe modify something accordingly. If you want the longer stem tucking underneath, that doesn't bother you you can leave them longer or you can trim. Again, if you wanna leave them really long, by all means, do whatever you're comfortable with. All right, the layering needs to start with the egg. We'll put our mat down. Our egg. Give that a good press. Then comes our stem. I'll just put those all in. Then we'll start adding our flowers. All right, the stems are down and I'm not gonna iron anything yet. Let's talk about the circles. It is actually difficult to cut a perfect circle. I don't think I've ever cut a perfect circle, but there are some techniques. It's, you wanna have a good sharp pair of scissors and don't take short little chops 
and try to move yourself around, move the fabric. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to open that up and I'm turning the fabric versus trying to turn my hand. That way I'm always cutting in a natural position. There are circle cutters and all kinds of things out there. If you're inclined to use those, do whatever you're comfortable with. But remember, this is a handmade project. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be fun. So let's focus on fun. To remove that, we'll just peel that off. And I'm just going to begin to lay down those circles. Let's see here. That yellow one actually went down first and that teal one overlaps it slightly. And you could put these in any arrangement you want, of course. There's such a big piece of fabric here. Even if you wanted to add something extra, maybe some smaller ones, by all means, you know, personalize it, make it what you want it to be. I like that one. I like the wording to be straight up. <laughs> that, that I do want to see. Once that's done, we have our kind of grassy area here to put down. How cute is that? Now, I'm gonna lift the entire section. And you're going to just work in section. Put the iron down, avoid any level of rotation or you're going, you could distort that. I've done, I've done those things. I've learned my lesson, take my time, let the iron sit in a section a good five to six seconds. All the way across, I'll just keep ironing, let it cool down, and then we're gonna peel that off. And then we'll talk about putting the bunny on, onto the background, and continuing on with the project. Okay, now my favorite part. I love peeling this up, and now all of those individual shapes are now one. So cool you're going to have a lot of reasons to, if you like applique, there are so many occasions. I don't really do applique without this, these tools anymore, and that's ready to go. So let's just look at what we have next. Remember how the bunny is the furthest in the background, and we didn't want to put the bunny down because that was kind of block our view. It's, it's a dark brown fabric. Some suggestions here are you can kind of just get your background cut out to the size that you want it to be. And again, you could leave it slightly oversized, either one. The pattern specifically talks about the letters being about two and a half inches down from the top. So you might want to start there, maybe even drawing a horizontal plane to put those letters down and space them where you want them to be. You can certainly start at the very top and do the happy, draw that line and then kind of that shelf for the Easter with a temporary marking tool, if, if you want to do that, and lay those words out. And then, of course, toward the bottom, you can see here where, again, there's about an inch, maybe inch and a half. One thing I think I will do, just so that my the bunny is where it should go relative to everything else, is do almost a partial fusing, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. That's where the bunny goes, and here's where the egg and everything else associated with that goes. So that I merge these layers together. Everything's nice and smooth. And of course, I'm not gonna be, I'm just merging this part together. This is just one idea. Uh, 
Oh, we might have cooled down. No, we're still at a medium heat. I'm only going to be ironing where the bunny and this part touches. I don't need to re-iron this. I'm just trying to merge these layers together. Okay, and really at this point, I'm done with the diagram. We can put that off to the side, done with the light box. In fact, let me clean that up so we have a little bit more working space. So I do have my background piece just because I have limited space. I did cut this to the exact sizes needed. And this is where I'm just going to have this running parallel to the bottom, smoothing out the bunny. Doesn't matter whether you wanna put the lettering on first or you wanna do the lettering later. I try to get this even. If you want to be laying a ruler out at the bottom so that you're setting along that horizontal plane and then smoothing out. And then measuring left to right. Let's see what we've got here for a measurement. A little over one and a half, a little over one and a half. I'm happy with that. Once you're happy, try to just bring the mat to the project and we'll begin to iron that down. One thing, because I cut out the center here, this is, does not have fusible, I am smoothing this out so I don't get any wrinkles here. I don't want to create kind of a bubble. We know the glue is really out in this portion here. So that's the one time I do tend to smooth that so I don't get any wrinkles. And then when I'm happy that it's smooth, I go back, slow down, get everything ironed down well. So the pattern talked about measuring two and a half inches uh, from the top. And that's really where the top of those letters are. Let me move this out of the way here. This is where the friction pen comes in. And let me move it actually this direction. I think this will work probably better for me. Two and a half inches from the top. I'm gonna lay my two and a half inch ruler down. This also works really well for cutting binding strips. And I'm just going to draw a line here. And that's where it's going to be the top of my letters. So as I start to trade, bring out my H-A-P-P-Y, now you have a place to reference. Otherwise, you might be a little bit all over the place. And just put them down, find a spacing you like. You can check your spacing left to right. I, I take the time, right? There's been too many times where I just was hasty and I was like, why did I not take the time to measure that? Why did I do that? And I think I got very lucky today. <laughs> I just, today must be a good alignment day. I don't know. It seems to be working out well. I might scoot that one over just a little bit. And again, ironing that down. And let me just go do that. I'll be right back and then we'll work on Easter. And then we're gonna talk about what you would do next to stitch everything down. Then we'll talk about quilting, uh, easy peasy, a great one to do on your home machine. And then we'll talk about how to make that hanging sleeve in the back. So you can also be displaying that on that cute craft holder up there. For the next uh, letters, of course, we wanna have some spacing above our top of our bunny's ear. You can see it's much snugger. So we can again draw a line and it's about a half an inch beneath that here. Find the very bottom. And we'll draw a 
line. And again, that's going to be the top of our letters. So let's look at that. It starts a little bit to the outside. You know, cutting these out, as I said, Riley Blake made these kits. And so it has been a long time since we have traced and cut out applique shapes on our own, because as you know, one of the things we love so much here are our laser cut shapes. We've been spoiled. <laughs> and if you are a regular customer, you're like, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about, Jennifer. We love those. We love being able to just have it ready to go, right? Peel off the paper backing and go. No, these were all cut by hand and these extra little curls and hooks, you know, these all take a little bit of extra time. They are lovely, but it makes me appreciate our laser cut kits. And if you love applique, be sure to go to the website, click on kits by type, I think it's by type laser cut. And there's a lot, a lot of choices in there. Really every season, holiday, month, uh, anything you could want is there. I think that's probably straight. I'm not looking at it entirely straight on. I'm gonna check that before I iron anything down. One final check would be, what's the bottom of that letter? And I'm not quite eight, I'm about eight and three eighths. So you can just check those measurements, make sure you're where you wanna be. Once you're happy, again, let's iron everything down. And while I'm ironing, this is where thread comes in. Grab coordinating thread, we certainly have that on the website. The Sulky 50 weight, a great affordable thread um, and some pretty colors. Uh, you could pick that up. Anything you have that you're sewing with at home would do a good job. But if you're looking for, maybe you don't have a lot of thread, the Sulky 50 weight is a great choice. We also have Aurifil, lovely, a deeper range of colors, a little bit more of an expensive product. That thread is made in Italy. Worth the value, of course, but you'll be able to look at the thread by weight and really 50 weight is what you'd be looking for. Needles. The super nonstick size 8012 is really your go-to needle for this. This works so well for products that have fusible webbing. So it's specifically engineered so that as you're stitching everything down, um, it's not gumming up that needle. And I love that. So we just use a straight stitch around here. If you want to get creative, maybe you have some specialty stitches on your machine that you'd like to stitch that down, you could certainly do that now. Or if you wanna have a really embossed look, it's a little bit more work, but you could put the batting, even the backing on the back of this at this point and stitch through everything and look really embossed. If that's not you and you wanna just stitch that down here, however you wanna do that, prepare your top. Then comes your batting and your backing and then you're going to quilt as desired. They, we did some nice swirls inside ours. Again, just a straight stitch around all of our applique shapes. If you wanna add some swirls of details at that point with top quilting in your flowers, that's your choice. So let's talk about the hanging sleeve because you can see this is hanging here on the back. So let's just look at that. So I'm gonna turn the project over and we're gonna pretend that this is our quilt sandwich. We have our batting and our backing would be right side up at this point. I really love the technique that uh, Riley Blake has for making their hanging sleeve. And so you'll have the two sides that fold in a quarter of an inch. Great to use the hot ruler for that. Basically, let's pretend that that's a raw edge. We just fold that over to the distance we want, iron, and then iron it again. And you can see that we've top stitched that down. Fold that in half. Again, this is gonna be the backing up. Run that right along the top. Pin or clip in place. One eighth of an inch basting right there to go ahead and secure that. Then at the very bottom, 
we whip stitch that close just to, and, and make sure you're not going to the front. That needs to stay on the back. You've got this top, your batting and your backing. So when you're whip stitching this close all the way across, just be shallow. You can go into the batting, but don't go to the front. So that's how you secure the bottom. And then of course, you're gonna be putting on that binding all the way around and we have our binding fabric here. If binding's brand new to you, be sure to check out our binding tutorial. I found like five or six different ways to put on binding. Check that out, pick your favorite way and go ahead and get that binding onto your project and then ready for display. Um, be sure to pick up the craft hanger if you haven't already done that. There might be some limited spots available in the door banner club if you're watching this and maybe you're not in the club yet. We would certainly love to have you in there. I will be joining you next month as we continue this series. We'll be diving into some patchwork, so be sure to grab those patchwork pins. The fresh blade in your rotary cutter, the fresh needle in your sewing machine, and of course, some good thread for piecing. I'll see you next month as we continue our door banner club by Radley Blake Designs.